Hey, this is Nat, and we're off our couch in Orlando, Florida, navigating our way through Disney's Hollywood Studios on our way to Galaxy's Edge to work within the Droid Depot so we can create our very own droids. On the way there, though, we hit traffic. There's a cavalcade coming through, the Pixar Pals cavalcade. Uh, this is our first trip to Hollywood Studios since reopening, so this is our first time seeing this cavalcade. And as much as we enjoy seeing the stars of the Invincibles, Monsters, Inc., and Toy Story, we're really anxious about getting to our reservation at Droid Depot. My son is pacing with a frown on his face right now because we've been wanting to do this for two years and he doesn't want to be late. We're all really, really excited. And we love visiting the theme parks and doing interesting activities like this at the theme parks. So if you concur and theme parks are your theme, be sure to subscribe because we'll be hitting up different theme parks around Central Florida all this year. So as the cavalcade comes to an end with Buzz Lightyear driving past us, we're going to race behind Buzz to get to Galaxy's Edge. So we make it to our reservation at Joy Depot. Joy Depot does accept walk-ins, but space and availability is not guaranteed, which is why you can make reservations 180 days in advance. So as we're passing through the corridor on our way now into Galaxy's Edge, I'm reminded of how excellent the theming is. Galaxy's Edge is set within the village of Black Spire Outpost on the planet of Batu, and all of the surroundings, even the lingo. On Batu, there's no such thing as dollars, uh, they're credits. It all really works together to immerse you in the experience. And if all of that wasn't enough to keep you engaged, our famous characters from the Star Wars universe roamed the park, like Vi Marathi, a spy for the Resistance, and the Jedi Master Rey Skywalker. We also see Chewbacca, always friendly and engaging, one of the most beloved characters in the Star Wars universe, and the Stormtroopers. They're intimidating and threatening, but they're our favorites to interact with. <laughs> All of this happens near the Droid Depot, the workshop where you can create your own BB series or R series unit droid, which we have arrived to a little early actually. We have 15 minutes before our reservation time and we actually can't get in line to check in until our reservation time, so we might as well browse. It's so cool in here. I have sensory overload when I walk through here. So much to see above our heads, to the side, right in front of our faces. We're scanning the shelves, taking a look at all of the merchandise and apparel you can purchase here. Check out this smartphone case that actually lights up. So cool. There's lots of awesome gear here to sport your Joy Depot or Galaxy's Edge fandom. And within the shop, there are additional decals and accessories that you can purchase to add to your droid building experience. I'm desperately trying to keep my kids from shopping for droid accessories before we've even begun the process of building the droids. Thank goodness we only have 15 minutes to browse, so we're back in line now to check in for our reservation. So the plan today is to build two droids, two R-series droids, because we've heard from others they're more durable than the BB series, plus you can customize the R-series more. This experience is recommended for ages 3 and up, but I personally think a $100 droid and my 4-year-old is not a sound idea. So one droid is mine and I'll be accepting input from my daughter and she can use it with me and a second droid will be my son's. So we get to pick the parts we need from the conveyor belt. Isn't this so cool? It looks like you're actually in a workshop in a faraway galaxy and that's exactly what's intended. We are in Mubo's workshop, an expert droid builder and programmer who has passed his knowledge on to the staff who faithfully assists you on your quest to create your very own droid. We have the choice of just purchasing the droid building experience at $99 or the bundle, which includes the droid building experience, a personality chip, and a backpack. We're sticking with just the droids because I've already been hearing about all the other cool accessories available, so just gonna go with the $99 droid. As I stated already, we're going to build two R-series droids. The R-series droids are like R2-D2, first seen in the original Star Wars trilogy. Uh, and the other option is the BB unit, like BB-8, which is a newer droid, first appearing in Star Wars The Force Awakens. So for the R-series droids, we'll need to pick out four pieces, which are shown in the diagram of our basket. A dome, a body, a center leg, and a set of side legs. 
And from what I understand, what you see is what you get. They can run out of certain colored parts, but there are so many different colors to choose from and different styles too. For example, my son is choosing a different style of dome than from what my daughter and I picked up. So we're gonna take some time to browse and make sure we see all that's available before making our final choices. And it seems like my daughter is picking out all of her favorite colors. There's no matching or theming going on here. On the other hand, my son definitely knows what look he's going for. He's picking his parts out with a plan. And there's someone here to make sure we're getting all the parts we need before we head over to the build station. So instructions on how to construct a droid is at our build station. And if you're having issues, uh, let's say perhaps you're trying to build with your four year old who doesn't really know how to follow instructions or how to use tools and the adult that's supposed to be helping is trying to film the experience at the same time, there are cast members here to help you alone, thank goodness. <laughs> so just two people are allowed in the build station and at least one person must be 14 years old or older. The boys are in the droid building station beside us. Needless to say, they are doing a much better and less clumsy job than us. So we're gonna be following along on their building experience as well. So as you can see, they're working with a different dome than we are, as I said before. So there's some electric screwing going on and a lot of snapping into place until you hear that clicking sound. And we have just a few more parts to choose now. We have to pick our compartment covers for the droids. And then we are all done. It doesn't take us long at all to complete our task. From picking up the pieces at the conveyor belt to completing the droid build took about 15 minutes. And now it's time for activation and my kids are so ready for this. <laughs> so am I. Once we hit that red button, the miracle of droid life starts to happen right in front of our eyes. Lights are blinking, the droid head is spinning. It feels like the excitement of Christmas morning. So once the droids are activated, we get instructions on how to use the remote and the droids and we take them on a test run. Since we didn't purchase a backpack, we get a carrying case for the droid because they have to be contained at Disney. They're not permitted to just roam freely throughout the park. And since my kids love to customize, we're back in front of the decals, which are buy one, get one free right now. Uh, I don't know if that's always the case. Uh, I do also get a 20% pass holder discount, and we're also gonna pick up personality chips. The personality chips change how the droid sounds and interacts within the park. You can choose from First Order, Resistance, or Scoundrel, and there's a machine where you can press the buttons and hear the different personality chip sounds. The personality chips are three for $30. So we're picking up three since buying two at $14.99 would be the same price. Uh, we're also grabbing a serving tray for the droids. Uh, don't know why, because I personally enjoy drinks in much bigger cups than this, but I don't know, the kids feel this is a great idea. And blasters just got added to this stack, so the droids have the option of working the kitchen or managing security, I guess. Thankfully, we can use our 20% pass holder discount on everything on but the droid. On the way out of Droid Depot, our droids seem to be interacting with these droids. And then we placed them in front of the droids on the outside of the shop to see what would happen. And after about 30 seconds, both droids start to make noise and move. Uh, there used to be a test mat here where you could control your droid. It was a really cute and cool experience because there would be multiple droids moving and spinning around. I showed it in my Hollywood Studios video when we visited before the park shut down in 2020. So I'm assuming the mat is no longer there due to social distancing efforts. And that's why the characters also aren't walking around and mingling with guests, which is what they did during our last video here. And I'll put the link to that video in the description box so you can see what I'm referring to. But back to what's happening now. I wanted to deck out our droids with all of the accessories. My son already started applying the decals to his droid and I was hoping to do the rest of the customizations but it is hot out here. <laughs> the seat is even hot and uncomfortable. And honestly, I'm not sure how to put the serving set together. So we're gonna move the customization process to somewhere cooler, comfortable, and spacious. Until then, we're gonna grab some drinks to cool off. We have the Galaxy Edge's Coke and Sprite at $6 each. They also offer Diet Coke and the Sani water bottles. The style of the bottle and how they're printed in Arabesque, the language featured in Star Wars films, make these really great souvenirs. And we also tried blue milk for the first time. 
Uh, we have ours with rum, which is $14. Without rum is $7.99. And we both like it. Uh, this is a blend of coconut and rice milk flavored with dragon fruit, pineapple, lime, and watermelon. And I am pleasantly surprised with the taste. I'm not a fan of coconut at all, um, but it tastes really good and it's really refreshing too. Uh, I would drink it again without the rum though. I can't taste that at all. So after cooling off sun, we are now carrying our joys to a cooler, comfortable, and spacious place, home, <laughs> to finish the customizations. Okay, so first we're going to set up the serving tray. And figuring out that they click together is pretty obvious, but I had to watch another video to see that the tray just sits on the legs. The back of the box says attaches, so I think attach, I'm thinking something is clicking to something else, but no, they just sit on the legs. This piece is really flimsy. When we bought it, the cast member suggested that we use glue to keep it together. To be blunt, it's a pain to put together and keep together. So finally, here is our model wearing the R-Series serving tray, which includes seven cups and an articulating serving arm. And our model is serving drinks like a pro. <laughs> Do not try to move the droid while it's wearing this accessory though. We tried that and not only did the serving tray collapse into pieces, the head or the dome went flying off too. So yeah, it's just for show. Okay, so moving on to the blasters. You have to push down on the side covers to remove them and then line the blaster connection to the attachment. We think the blasters are really cool. They have both light and sound effects. Check it out. So my son's droid is modeling this stylish yet threatening look, the R-Series blaster attachments. Both of these accessories are $17.99. Lona and I aren't really impressed with the serving trays, uh, definitely just for show, not at all functional, but the kids still find it fun. The blaster attachments are cool though, we feel that's a good accessory to have with your droid, and we all agree the decals aren't really worthwhile. They didn't stick well the day we purchased the droid, and it's just getting worse now. The decals are $7.99, and remember we got that buy one get one free deal, and also the 20% pass holder discount. So it wasn't a lot of money, but I don't know, we still felt like we could have did without it. Even though we didn't buy the backpack, I did want to say something about it because it was a pain trying to lug our droid out with the cardboard box. It was uncomfortable. So if I was going to be bringing the droid back into the park a lot to interact with the land, then yeah, I think the backpack would be an excellent purchase. So going back in time when we were at Droid Depot, the cast member told us to be sure to turn the droids off because they would talk constantly. I've heard otherwise that the droids do not interact with each other, so I decided to try it out for myself. So here is the face off, and I waited a little over a minute and a half for one of the droids to talk. And then about 15 seconds later, the other droid would talk. So both droids have a scoundrel personality chip. So the droid on the left has the purple chip and the one on the right has the silver one. I swapped the silver chip for orange, which is one of the resistance personality chips, to see if there was a change in their frequency of interactions. And it was pretty much the same. Uh, one droid talks and then about 15 seconds later, the other droid would move and say something. I let the two sit for a bit and get to know each other better while we were preparing accessories and a couple of times they would move one after another but it wasn't consistent so I still felt like it was random which is cool I like the randomness of it it keeps things interesting. We also want to mention something that we had to play around with on our own and figure out for ourselves. So when they first give you the droid it's standing erect when well, you know it has to fit inside of that box. Of course it doesn't move like that though. It's obvious that you have to kick the legs back, but you also need to snap the feet forward and then move the center leg back so the droid is balanced and moves well. One last thing we want to try is the Droid Depot app. So this app allows you to play with your droid at home. So we're going to check it out and see all we can do. 
Uh, so first we're following the instructions on the app to connect the droid and just one of the droids, my son's droid connected. So you can only connect one droid at a time. We connected the other droid after we were done experimenting with my son's droid. So here's the profile and it scanned the chip. So it's showing the droid's affiliation as resistance and we can choose from four different options in the app. Uh, we can choose maneuvering, strategy, piloting, and droid builder. Strategy is a game, a classic game of tic-tac-toe. And the droid just lost it. Oh, it is mad. Look at it storm off. <laughs> and check out the celebratory spin when it wins. Oh, this droid is too much. <laughs> so we can also choose maneuvering. And maneuvering is actually dancing. You can pick a track and then choreograph the droid's dance sequence. So here's just a tidbit of what the droid can do on the dance floor. <laughs> So you see it lost its blaster. It can't really dance and hold the blasters at the same time, which, which sounds unsafe. That doesn't sound like a good idea anyway. <laughs> then it also ran into the other droid too. That was just standing there. Reminds me of that popular 80s song, No Parking on the Dance Floor. <laughs> this is so much fun. My son is saying how this is worth the $100. I can definitely see us having a lot of fun with this app in the future. Couple more things we can do with the app. You can create your own virtual droid and you can pilot the droid from the app. No remote control needed. So that was our experience building an R-series droid from the park uh, all the way back home using the app. Um, building the droid was a lot of fun and we're surprised how much use we've gotten out of the droid at home too. I would definitely recommend the experience and we look forward to having more fun with our droids. So next week, we begin a five-week series in South Florida. We're hitting up a little bit of Miami, Boca Chita Key, and a whole lot of Fort Lauderdale. So be sure to subscribe. We'll be enjoying the sunshine, gorgeous scenic views, delicious food, and uncommon cocktails. We're trying to take in all South Florida has to offer. As usual, thanks so much for getting off the couch with us. Wishing you fun and adventure until next time and click on the video to see another one of our experiences. Thanks for watching.